Um, so Rocky is a 1976 American sports drama directed by John G. Evelson and starring Sylvester Stallone, who also wrote the screenplay. It tells the story of Rocky Balboa, a down and out boxer living in Philadelphia. Apart from the occasional bout at a sleazy boxing joint, Rocky spends most of his time collecting debts for a local loan shark, hanging out with his alcoholic best friend, Paulie, played by Burt Young, and attempting to win the affections of Paulie's cripplingly shy sister, Adrian, played by Talia Shire. We learn from the grizzled gym owner, Mickey, played by the late great Burgess Meredith, that Rocky once had the potential to be a great fighter, but he squandered it. Fortune strikes, however, when the current heavyweight champion of the world, played by the impossibly charismatic Carl Weathers, is left without a ranked opponent to square off against for the World Heavyweight Championship. Having poured thousands of dollars into promotions, Cree refuses to cancel the event and decides instead to turn it into a novelty exhibition by offering a local unknown boxer the chance to face him in the ring. Rocky has a dismal boxing record, but Creed loves the marquee potential of his nickname, the Italian Stallion. He offers the spot to Rocky, but Rocky doesn't know it's a show. He thinks it's a damn fight. So, um, yeah, so one of the reasons that I wanted to pick this film was because I think it's a film that is sort of misunderstood or misremembered. Um, I think it's kind of been let down by a few things. One thing that it kind of got working against it is... Um, it was released the same year as some of the greatest movies ever made, 1976, probably one of the best years in film ever. It was the same year as Taxi Driver, Network, um, All the President's Men, and these movies were all nominated for the 1976 Oscar, and Rocky won, and that was kind of an upset because all of these films seem like really bold, sort of experimental auteur films that were breaking out and saying really important things. Whereas Rocky seemed very sentimental and old-fashioned and you know, people liked it, but they just didn't think it was in the same league as these other great films. Um, and the other thing was, I think it's been imitated and sort of parodied so many times that it's become really cliched. But yeah, I think if you go back to the original film, and I don't think, I'm not sure how many people have watched it. I think they sort of, they've probably seen clips of it on television or seen bits of it in, in parodies and well, things like Family Guy or The Simpsons. But if you actually go back to it, it's a really interesting, well-made, really well-acted and really well-written film. Like, I don't think people realize what a great writer Stallone was. And his performances, I think this is the best performance of Stallone's career. I don't think he ever equals this. Um, and it's not sort of, Stop updating the text book. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. I didn't want to interrupt your creed, but Demolition Man is the best alone movie ever, period. Carry on. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I'll let you guys talk for a bit. So has anyone seen uh, Rocky? And uh, what, what are your thoughts on it? I didn't see it until I was in uh, almost out of college. Like my friend gave me the box set. He's like, just, just watch them. So I watched all four. I think there were four at the time. They did do the fifth one like years later, right? But it was the four together and I just breezed through them. I love them. And then they completely like went out of my head, but uh, I did love them at the time. I just, I haven't like rallied around it. Like, like so many other people have, but I, I loved the, the first one. And I really liked the fourth, the, the fourth one with the, the, the Russian, right? That was Rocky four. Russian. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I've been, I've been, I will break you. <laughs> yeah. I will break you. <laughs> and actually I saw the fifth Rocky, which was, I think was, was it just called, was it? Rocky Returns. I forget where his son Rocky wants Balboa. to be boxed. Rocky, yeah, it might have just been Rocky Balboa. But I saw that before I saw any of the other Rocky movies, so I kind of like I saw them in the wrong, definitely the wrong order. But I did, I did like it when I first saw it. Yeah, that's kind of how I, I think by the time I heard about Rocky, it was such a humongous cultural thing, um, and I, I thought I knew what it was. Like I think I saw a clips of Rocky Four on television or Rocky Five on television, and it seemed like a fun kind of action movie. And I do kind of like the later movies, Rocky four and three I, I don't like five at all i refuse to acknowledge that exists um but for some reason i i rented rocky one just on a whim just because I, I saw it in a video store and it, i was just surprised how little action there was and how much it was more about uh the characters and how much heart they had and how how sort of quiet and contemplative and almost sad the first hour is and the depiction of uh, this neighborhood in Philadelphia and its people and it's it just feels r like a really real well constructed um, location the way it's shot and the way the sets are designed and just all the little characters that pop up as Rocky goes about his day-to-day -day existence um, I think just I don't know I, 
I just really love it. That first hour, it feels like we're living in someone's life and we, we become so invested in his sort of day-to-day activities and what a sort of decent person he is. Like, you know, he seems a bit slow and thuggish, but there's just so much heart and humanity and empathy to his character. And um, there's kind of – Stallone has this wonderful mix of kind of uh, goofiness and sadness in his performance, um, which, I don't know, I just really responded to. And he puts on this front of being fun and helpful to people, but there's just these really lovely moments every now and then where he's just by himself and you just see this like tremendous sadness and sort of disappointment in himself. Um, and I think ultimately what the film is about is this guy, it's, it isn't – it's so different from the later films in the series where Rocky is facing a villain like uh, Mr. T, uh, Clubber Lang, or, <laughs> or the, the, the great Russian uh, war machine that he has to bring down so he can drape himself in an American flag. And I, I like these movies. These are fun kind of almost comic book movies before comic book movies were a thing. Um, but the first movie and the first two movies, I, I really like the first, second movie as well, are much more about Rocky and a few of the characters, they're not facing an enemy. They're, they're more coming to terms with themselves and trying to trying to fix who they are and trying to become better people. I think I think Stallone is great, and I also think Talia Shire gives an amazing performance as this really shy, anxious person. Like her, I don't know. I, I've known some people like that, and her performance is amazing in the first half. And then to see her sort of come out of that shell, it's quite it's really quiet and subtle, but I think it's really well performed. And those two. Those two sort of playing off each other, I think, works well. And the fact that they've been isolated in their life for so long and and coming into contact with each other or filling each other's gaps, as, as Rocky says, sort of fulfilling each other emotionally um, helps them come out of that, that sort of dark place. Um, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm talking way too much. Uh, have you seen the movie, Joseph? I have, but it was a long time ago. But yeah, no, I'm definitely inclined to agree with you. Like the real highlight, or at least the, what I remember the real highlight was definitely the characterization and the acting and just sort of how, how you really did want to root for the characters and have it all work out well for them. Yeah, um, I can't imagine a single other actor playing any of these parts. Um, Paulie, the guy who plays Paulie, Burt Young is fantastic. Um, Carl Weathers, I don't know how he wasn't like a megastar for like decades he's one of the most charismatic action heroes i mean i know he was in predator i guess and some of the other rockies but he should have had like the most arnold schwarzenegger career he had that long run on arrested development don't forget <laughs> oh yes he was amazing in arrested development <laughs> <laughs> he's always cooking stews <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you see me more as the respected dramatic actor or more of the beloved comic actor whoa 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 whoa, whoa. there's still plenty of meat on that bone you take this home, throw it in a pot, add some broth, a potato. Baby, you got a stew going. I think I'd like my money back. Have you seen the movie Imogen? Um, no. Does he win? <laughs> uh, well, I guess, I guess I'll put a spoiler warning at the beginning of this, but no, he doesn't win. But what he wanted to do, basically, um, yeah, he has like five weeks to train and he trains his heart out and he decides, I'm going to do this. I'm not just going to be, you know, I'm going to try as hard as I can. I'm going to try and prove to myself that I'm worth something. And he's he wants to go the distance, basically. He wants to stand up against Creed and not be knocked down. He wants to go 15 rounds. And he does that, and he's still standing in the, in the 15th round. But he loses by decision. Uh, but the kind of point of the movie is that the victory was more that he, he lost in the 15 rounds. And, and the final moments of the movie where he's still standing, he's, he doesn't even care. He's just yelling Adrian's name because that's kind of what, what's really important to him. Do you consider it a sports movie? Because I know it's, I mean, it's kind of always fits into that, but it always seemed like it's its more of a it kind of cross so many cultural lines. Like I, I knew nothing about boxing. I, I didn't know the, you know, aside from the two people punching each other and whoever's left standing wins. But I just remember completely getting lost in the movie and you don't have to know much about, you know, the, the sport and everything to, to, to appreciate it. No, I definitely think it is a sports movie as well as a drama. Um, I think it's got a few different genres that it's playing around with but the sports part of it the boxing part of it i think is so well handled i don't know how realistic it is like compared to say raging bull or something but it is just like invigorating watching those fights your heart is racing the whole time um and the training scenes like the training montages i know they're such a cliche at this point and some of the later rocky movies had about 15 mo- training montages throughout it got a bit ridiculous um <laughs> gotta, gotta drink gotta drink those eggs <laughs> drink the eggs yeah but 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 the first time you see it, it's 
I don't know. I don't know what it is, but uh, I can't. I don't even know if there were montage so that that kind of montage before that, or if that was a thing that um, Rocky not invented but sort of brought into popular sort of film technique. Um, but it's really well handled, and I think one of the reasons is because of the uh, implementation of the Steadicam, which I think this is one of the first films where the Steadicam was used, and it's the ability to hook up a camera and move move with the actor and that's utilized a lot and I think especially in the second half there's a real sort of kineticism to the film and a movement to the film that contrasts really well with the slowness and the stillness and the contemplation of the first half uh, when he's running through the streets um, of Philadelphia it really works well um, and there's tremendous energy you can't watch this film and not want to go out and run like <laughs> a couple of laps or something <laughs> It just it just gets your blood moving. Have you have you made it to Philadelphia and run up the steps to the? Yes, I have actually. I uh, I went to America a couple of years ago. I was in New York most of the time, but yeah, I took a, I went down to Philadelphia for a couple of days because I had to go find those steps. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite scene is when Mickey comes to Rocky's apartment for the first time and he's offering to be his manager for the upcoming fight, and um, Rocky refuses him at first, and. I don't know, there's just all these weird father-son abandonment issues bubbling below the surface. And Meredith's delivery treads such a delicate line of weariness and ferocity and regret. But I never had, I never had no management. That's the trouble, but now I got all this knowledge. I got it up here and I, I want to give it to you. I want to give you this knowledge. I want to take care of you. I want to make sure that all this shit that happened to me doesn't happen to you. You know what I mean? Fight said. Listen to me. I want to be your manager. You follow that, do you? Fight said I don't need no manager. But you can't buy what I'm going to give you. I mean, I've got pain and I've got experience. No, I got pain. I got experience too. Now, listen, kid. Hey, look. Hey, people. Mick. What? Look, I need your help about ten years ago, right? Ten years ago. Right. You never helped me. No. You didn't care. Well, if you wanted help. I say, if you wanted help, why didn't you ask? Why didn't you just ask me, kid? Look, I asked, but you never heard nothing. Well, I, I, uh, I know I, I'm 76 years old. But I think my favorite shot of the movie occurs during the training montage when the camera is panning along the docks with um, Rocky's silhouette running against the uh, faded gray Philadelphia Harbor and there's this point where he passes by an old cargo ship and suddenly Rocky breaks into this furious sprint as though he's just broken through some um, invisible barrier and that's yeah I mean to me that's kind of the big triumph of the movie I mean the sort of subtle triumph the, the obvious triumph is him fighting and facing off against Creed and that's uh, the choreography and that is one of the best fight scenes I've ever seen in a film um with the movie with the music and all that as I say I don't know how realistic it is but it's just really impressive sort of operatic cinema but um the sort of personal triumph to me is him running up those steps because you see earlier in the film him getting up before drinking his glass of eggs and then running through the streets of Philadelphia and it's just it's four in the morning and it's so quiet and misty and cold and he, by the time he gets to the steps, he's so out of breath, he can barely crawl up. And then the second time you see, he just races up them and, and jumps and throws his arms up in the air. And it's kind of that, that yeah, you can really feel that sense of pride in that moment because it's just him. He's not doing this to prove anything to the world. Um, he's not beating Creed because he hates Creed. This is all about him. It's him trying to prove something to himself that he's worth more than he thinks he is. Um, yeah, I was thinking this is one of the few sports movies that like you're not meant to hate the the opponent. You know, like Creed is basically a good guy, also, like you said, and it, it kind of goes against a lot of the uh, a lot of the tropes in, in in sort of sports movies or you know any any movie where there's an epic fight between two guys. You're you're, you're not meant to hate Creed in this. Yeah, Creed's a great character. I mean, the worst you can say about him is he's sort of arrogant and he yeah. doesn't have. Uh, He's not. I guess he's not as into the sport as as Rocky is. It's more about he loves the kind of pageantry of it. I mean, he's an amazing athlete. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Rocky can't stand against him uh, in the beginning, and he he still beats Rocky. Um, but I love all the scenes of him wheeling and dealing. He's like a brilliant sort of businessman, and he's like sent two hundred <laughs> roses to the to the mayor's wife and um, fly my barber up to Philly. <laughs> so he, yeah, it's really cool. But I guess that this is one of the things I loved about the third movie is uh, this idea of the eye of the tiger. Like he's losing that edge that Rocky has. 
Um, and then it sort of comes back in, in the third movie and they become friends. Um, are you aware of, I think this is true, that it's uh, like nominally based on an actual real life boxer who sort of had pretty much the same arc that he was a relatively like a, a nobody and ended up lucking out and getting a, a boxing match against Muhammad Ali, who Apollo Creed clearly has quite a bit in common with. And yeah, he pretty much, he went like a dozen or so rounds against Ali and sort of, he didn't win, but his, his sort of goal wasn't to win it was just a last and it's pretty much uh like in hindsight a lot of people have accused stallone of just straight up copying that um yeah the guy you're talking about is chuck wepner um who fought muhammad ali at uh richfield coliseum and i think uh stallone saw this fight in a bar and he was i don't know he was just sitting drinking in a bar and he just watched this guy basically squaring off against the the world champion muhammad ali one of the most iconic fighters ever and i think he knocked him out or he didn't knock him out, but he knocked him down. And I think he might have lasted the 15 rounds. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that was, yeah, Chuck Webner was the guy that partly inspired Stallone. And uh, he drew from a few other people. Rocky Marciano, obviously, that's where he got the name. And uh, Joe Frazier, apparently. Um, part of his training was punching sides of beef, which was <laughs> incorporated into the movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the the film apparently sort of mirrors Stallone's life. Like he was living in poverty basically uh, before this. He was like a struggling actor. He'd done a few films, but he was living in a place basically smaller than the place that's depicted in the film. And he, I think he had to sell his dog because he couldn't afford to feed it anymore. And he went into an audition to audition for a part, and they they told him, "I'm sorry, you can you're not right for the part." And on on the way out the door, he said, "Oh, I'm also a writer." Do you, do you need any writing done? And they said, oh, what do you got? And he basically, at that point, went home and in three days worked out a, a first draft of the Rocky script <laughs> just on a whim. And uh, apparently, yeah, he poured a lot of his, his own life into it or his own struggles. Um, and he refused to sell the rights to the movie unless he could play himself because he knew it was probably his only chance. At one point, they offered him a million dollars for the script, um, which was, yeah, and he was living in poverty at the time, but he refused to take it unless he could play the part. So... I think they ended up buying it for like 10000 or something, which, um, but he got to play the part. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. So has your view of the movie changed? Has your interpretation or appreciation of the movie changed over time, Duncan? <laughs> Good question, Greg. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think it has. Like, I think I watched it when I was pretty young. And I love the sort of the sports angle at that point, you know, Rocky underdog coming up. It's a very sort of classic, simple story. It's utilized a lot um, before and since. But I think it wasn't until later that I sort of noticed all of the other performances and all the other sort of, I don't know, the look at working class life in Philadelphia and just the way Philadelphia was depicted. Uh, it's, I think it's subtle, but it, the way the city is captured is really important. It's an important part of the story, uh, including for the later films. It's very, very recognizable. It's not New York. Like most, most cities in film look like New York or Los Angeles, but I think it has a very distinct look. Do you, are you a fan of boxing? Did it get you into the sport at all? Because I've tried to watch boxing and I, I have never found it as exciting as, as boxing movies. <laughs> it, it actually kind of did for like a little bit, like not seriously, but I, I, I actually rented a bunch of other boxing movies um, and I watched a little bit of boxing. Like I think I rented a Muhammad Ali documentary and, um, and it, it's cool, but it didn't necessarily get me into it in a big way. But uh, I did. I did used to run with the the music playing, um, the Rocky themes and the, all the different songs. <laughs> so does it hold up as well as uh, Real Steel? You think Real Steel will hold up in twenty years, or, or not so much? Wait, what's Real Steel? Oh, wait, is that the Rocky yes. Rock'em Robot movie? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, they're both they're both uh, classics. Um, okay, <laughs> didn't want to hear I, you saying. I haven't seen that movie. Steel. I haven't seen that movie. <laughs> they should have called the Rock'em Sock'em Robots, though. That, that would have been I'm famous. sure they tried. <laughs> I would have seen that movie. <laughs> so what do people... I mean, people have any opinions on Stallone? I know he's not. the sort of doesn't have the best track record in terms of roles. Uh, I think so this and Rambo are probably his most iconic roles. But uh, he's pretty good in Copland, always... I liked. He's like those like mid '90s. He did those like a bunch. He did like uh, he did Demolition Man. There was one one of my favorite movies was uh, Daylight, where he's stuck in the Lincoln Tunnel and he has to get the oh, people yeah. out. Like that's and that actually had his son in it. He played one of the uh, the convicts. But that's like 
I could watch that. Uh, if it's if there's very few movies that are thrown to me, I'll just sit and watch them. But for some reason, Daylight is one of them because I just like I know every line, and it's just it's just I love getting into that world. It's like you know mid '90s New York City, and it's just a really great cop movie. It's a really great you know he's got the whole redemption arc, and you know something bad happened in his past. He's always trying to make up for it, and you know it's it's just a fun movie. If, I don't know, have you has anyone else seen Daylight? No. Nope. It's it's one of my top three or four uh, Stallone movies. I think but I, I was jokingly see... said Demolition Man, but Demolition Man actually is my favorite Stallone movie. Is that with Wesley Snipes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And they go in the future. Yes. Uh, didn't he, he play Judge Dredd? Judge Dredd is great. Yeah. Too, yeah. yeah. Judge Dredd. Number three. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think Bina made the point that um, he's a bit. He's sort of like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the sense that he projects this uh, goofier persona than he actually probably is. He seems to be quite a shrewd uh, businessman and uh, seems to have quite a bit of talent as a writer. So, I mean, R- Rambo is awesome. I, I, the original Rambo is it's, – it's quite similar to Rocky in a way because it it's a much different film than the later films, which did become mm-hmm. a bit comic bookish. The original movie is very sort of small and dark and subtle and it's about this veteran with post-traumatic stress and it's dealing with political issues about Vietnam and things like that. So, he doesn't actually kill that many people in the first Rambo, does he? Yeah, just the yeah. one, that guy that, it... like, fell out of the chopper. Mm. <laughs> so go see Rocky and go see uh, the original Rambo, which is called First Blood, because they're not what you think they are. I was, I was um, pleasantly surprised by um, the first Rambo film. It was just on TV one time, and I watched it, and I was like, this isn't what I thought it would be. So, um, yeah, I might give Rocky a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, I would champion people to go give Rocky a chance. 